Interiors, the greatest rooms of the century, created and commissioned by Fiden Editors, an introduction by William Norwich. This book covers designs from the beginning of the 20th century to present day. It features everything from luxury penthouses to chateaus to stunning townhomes, ranch and beach houses in over 20 countries. While there is no way I will be able to feature every designer in this book, they are all worth mentioning. I'm going to divide this book into three parts. This is the first of the three. Morella Agnelli and Stefan Boudon. This beautiful salon is located in a villa in Italy. It was designed in 1952 by Stefan Boudon, who was a French designer based in Paris. One of his most notable designs was for Jackie Kennedy when he was commissioned to design the Red Room at the White House. Franco Albini. Franco Albini was born in 1905. This is his very own living room in Milan, Italy. He was an architect and designer and is known for his rocking chaise lounge. This room was completed in 1940. Tadao Ando. This Japanese designer started out in life as a boxer, but when he visited the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, he was in such awe of this Frank Lloyd Wright design building that he immediately entered design school. This very undecorated design was completed in 1984 for Hiroko Shiro. Laura Ashley. Laura began her career by making hand-printed headscarves and dish towels from her kitchen table. By the 1970s, the Laura Ashley brand had become synonymous with floral Victorian, rural clothing, textiles, and furnishings. She completed this room in 1982. Sister Parrish and Albert Hadley with Brooke Astor. Brooke Astor married into the John Jacob Astor family in 1953. John Jacob was the first multimillionaire in America, and in 1962, she hired the Parrish Hadley firm to complete this dining room in her Park Avenue apartment. Billy Baldwin. Although this may look like a set from the show Mad Men, this is legendary designer Billy Baldwin as he stands in his own studio apartment in 1964. Billy chose to live in small spaces. He did have a larger home in Nantucket. It had two rooms. Billy said of his one-room apartment on East 61st Street, the best decoration in the world is a room full of books. Lord Berners. This is the living room and drawing room of Lord Berners at his home in Farringdon, England. The Lord was a British composer, novelist, painter, and aesthete as he appreciated and influenced beauty and style of his day. This room was designed in 1922. Janet de Botton. As a fellow lover of china and porcelain, this room spoke to me. It belongs to Janet de Botton, who is a philanthropist, collector, and lives on a 1,000 acre mountain range in France. This is her breakfast room in her farmhouse, decorated by Jean Louis Regnaud in 2004. Evangeline Bruce with John Fowler. After John Bruce retired as an American ambassador, he and his wife Evangeline hired John Fowler of Colfax and Fowler to design this living room in their home in London. The draperies, which were Fowler's forte, 
are of ruffled silk taffeta, and he trimmed the edges himself with pinking shears in 1969. Mario Buwata. Mario was also known as the Prince of Chintz. He popularized English country homes throughout America. His first published interior appeared in a 1969 issue of House and Garden. While visiting the home of Nancy Lancaster in Virginia in 1961, he saw a beautiful golden room. When he asked her what the color was, she replied, but a yellow. That room inspired his work for the rest of his life, he said. This is his home in New York with the butter yellow walls completed in 1997. Sybil Colfax. In 1929, when Lady Sybil Colfax faced certain poverty during the Wall Street crash, she opened her own business of interior design, Sybil Colfax Limited. She eventually asked John Fowler to join her and together they began Colfax and Fowler. This room was completed in 1934. Floor Cowls. This room appealed to me for many reasons. I loved the use of color, porcelain, and books to add interest. Cowles was a master designer, especially at using symmetry and asymmetry at the same time. This room was completed in 1954. Rose Cumming. Rose Cumming arrived from Australia to New York City in 1917. She soon befriended the editor of Vogue magazine, Frank Crowninshield. At a dinner with him, she asked what she should do to earn a living, and he suggested that she become a decorator. Her response was, maybe that's exactly what I will do, but first tell me what a decorator is. She completed this room in 1929. Coleman and Kravis. This room reminded me of my own den as a child. It provides comfort and Americana. Coleman and Kravis began their design firm in 1984 and specialized in modern traditional. This room was completed in 2012. Coleman and Kravis continue to have a design firm in New York City. Interiors, the greatest rooms of the century, was created and commissioned by Fiden editors with some of the most influential people in interior design today. The introduction is by William Norwich. This beautiful hardback book is covered in velvet. It has 447 pages and retails for about $100. This book can serve as an inspirational source or reference book for designers or anyone interested in beautiful rooms. Please join me for part two as we continue to look at these inspirational designers.